Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and today we're doing a couple days in the lives, but I finished filming a couple hours ago my biggest plant scam video. I don't know if that'll be up before or after this, but it's coming if not and I'm super excited about it. It was really fun to film. I set myself up a little table <laughs> with my uh, plant stand. This plant stand has proved to be one of the best things that I've ever bought. I have two of them thrifted. I never refinished them like I said I would, but they look fine. They definitely could use a, a refinish, especially this one. This one looks a little worse for wear, but I put the glass <laughs> from my Mills bow on it because I'm redoing my Mills bow, which will be a video you see relatively soon. Um, but I put my glass for my Mills bow on top of it and then I put my laptop here. And as you can see, I got my tripod. And it was like a perfect little table for me to read the stories. It was super fun. Anyway, that's a little behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, so today we need to take care of the plants that are living upstairs in my house because they have been a little, okay. I feel like I keep saying my plants have been neglected. It's obvious at this point. All of my plants have been neglected, okay? <laughs> all of them. That being said, we're going around and we're taking care of everything slowly. And today and tomorrow is just going to be another couple days of that. But before I get started, I have lunch that was just delivered. I started to use DoorDash recently and it is so good. It's super fast in my area. Um, I'm very, very happy that food delivery is still possible with my house currently. It smells so good out here because our fireplace is running. So it's like the most wonderful smoky smell. And check out our Christmas tree, still alive. Somebody told me to see if I can get a potted Christmas tree next year, which I totally meant to do this year. We go to a Christmas tree farm and I meant to ask them if we could dig up the tree rather than um, cut it down, but I forgot and I feel like they would have said no because I've never seen anybody else do that. I am going to enjoy my lunch. I ordered chicken salad chick. I don't know if anybody has ever heard of them, but they recently came to Colombia, and it's like my favorite place ever. I don't really like to eat meat, but this I can handle, I think because it's mixed in with like other things like fruit and stuff like that. You don't really, like you can taste the chicken, but it's not, it's not all that bad. Anyway, also their strawberry lemonade is literally so good. So I'm gonna enjoy this and then we're gonna head upstairs and take care of some plants up there. All right, friends, we are now in my bedroom, which transparently I just did a little speed clean <laughs> because I never film up here. I actually have some plants up here very recently, but prior to that, I didn't really have anything going on in here. I was about to say there was really no action in here. There was no plant action going on in here, but now I have a couple of plants and I actually congregated them all underneath my Soltec grow light, which I installed a couple of months ago. So that is what this light situation is. So yeah, I'm gonna sit in my dog's bed and I'm gonna tell you about what I think about the Soltec light so far. So number one, I can't tell if this Monstera is just like not doing well due to underwatering or if it's because the grow light is a little bit too intense for it. I don't really know, but either way, I'm not exactly loving the setup in that the plant is pretty close to the grow light and I got like the strongest grow light possible uh, from Soltec. I got like the really strong one, the Aspect grow light, um, which is a good grow light. Obviously, I really love the grow light, but I just think maybe it's a little bit too close to my plant. And also, I'm just not loving the way that this plant looks. And it makes me not want to take care of it. So I was doing some research on some pots that I could get, like instead, because this is a, I think like a 20 inch plastic nursery pot that last year I spray painted it orange to be more of like a terracotta looking color, but it's just not doing it for me because like the inside of the pot is black. Obviously I can't spray paint the inside, but it's just like very obviously a plastic pot that I painted. And the thing that I put around it 
It's just really annoying to work with on like a large scale. It needs a makeover. <laughs> I'm in the era of making things look nice. As I've shared in the past videos, I'm in the era of like redoing spaces and like just like organizing things and making things look nice and like appealing. So I'm gonna show you some items that I found, some planters that I found. And I don't know exactly how it's gonna go because I don't know what the root system looks like, but again, that's like a 20 inch pot. And like the biggest ones that I have found have been 15 or 16 inches wide at the most. I think I did find one that was 20. I don't know, I'm gonna show you. So this one is probably my favorite. It's a concrete fluted planter. This is from Pottery Barn. I have the extra tall 15 wide, uh, 16 inch wide by 31 and a half inches tall. And I am going to measure to see if that's like too tall because I don't want it to be much taller than it currently is. In fact, I'd probably want it to be possibly a little bit shorter because I want the plant to like grow up into the grow light rather than, I feel like it's like shying away from the grow light because it's too bright. I don't really know. I can also raise the grow light slightly. And there's a few other options. There's also the extra large, which is a 19.75 height, but I don't know what the width on that would be. Like it's kind of confusing. This is like the picture of like all of them together. So I think it's like the terracotta and that one is $200. But I found this one as well. This is from Crate and Barrel. It is $150. So it's definitely cheaper. This is an outdoor pot. It has a drainage hole and it's a, this looks plastic. This doesn't give me the vibe that it's like stone or something. It does look nice, but I feel like it looks a little bit too sleek. Like I liked the Pottery Barn one with the ridges on it. But anyway, this is a really good option. It looks tall enough. And then the last that I found, which I'm really into, but I wish that it was a darker color but it's these right here from West Elm. And the one that I'm specifically looking at is, uh, no, not that one. Yeah, this one, large. It's 21 inches diameter and 18 inches tall. So that's pretty like wide and short. And I'm thinking that that one would be good. Like maybe I just get like a little stool for it so it's not just sitting directly on the ground because I don't really like the way that that looks. I like for my plants to be at least sitting on something. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And that one's 250. So it's definitely the most expensive of all of the options. So I don't exactly know what I wanna do, but I need to figure out something cause I just really hate the way that this all looks. We need to do some watering in here. I have my squammy ferrum in here that is looking super floppy. It's fine though, it'll come back. Um, and then I have this really cute Hoya Australis, which I don't think you can see it very well, but I'll show you in the bathroom because I have a bathroom right off my bedroom where I do all my upstairs watering. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to show you this really cute leaf. Look at the variegation. It's like super variegated and it's new. And this plant has actually not put out, like I've had this plant for a really long time and it has not put out growth in so long until I moved it upstairs and now it's living under these grow lights. So I feel like it just needed more light. It wasn't getting enough where it was, which honestly feels kind of obvious. Like if your Hoya is not growing, it probably just needs more light or it has um, <laughs> flat mites. <laughs> Um, my dogs see a squirrel, so they're gonna bark, but I'm just gonna water these really quick and mute my dogs. These plants also tend to get really dusty, so I, whenever I water them, since they're so small, I just take my finger and rub the leaves to get all the dust off. While those plants drain out in the sink, we're going to take care of this plant right here, which, forgive me, I'm out of breath. It is literally so heavy. After I get it into a different pot, I know that I'm not gonna be able to bring it into the bathroom to do this, which kind of stinks. I feel like we don't talk enough about what happens when your plants get like really big. Like what is that actually like to take care of large plants? I have made a video about like large plant care before, but I don't feel like I touched enough on how, um, <laughs> Or maybe I did, I don't know. Maybe I need to revisit that idea. But yeah, when your plants get really big, it can get super overwhelming because you're like, how do I take care of this thing? 
Because at that point you're attached to it and like you want to keep it because you love it, but it's like, this is huge. Thankfully, my shower has one of these detachable shower head things. So I just get like lukewarm water and I'll water it through. <laughs> Cool, so while that is draining out, you might have seen the bundle of sheets hanging out on my bed. So I am working with Brooklinen on this video today and I'm really excited. Brooklinen is offering my viewers $20 off a purchase of $100 or more. So I wanna start by telling you that you can access that with the link in the description box below and using my code Becca De La Plants. But I'm so excited because I got the Lux Hardcore bundle from them which includes a duvet cover, a sheet set, and two extra pillowcases. Okay, so I think that we all know that high quality bed sheets can be really expensive, especially if you have a king size bed, like I do. But Brooklinen brings us quality and comfort just by cutting out the middleman. So the classic and the hardcore bundle set is between $200 and $250, depending on the size of your bed which is really good because luxury bedding is usually upwards of $500. And it was really nice because when I bundled all of this bedding together, I could mix and match the colors and like curate something that looked really special. It wasn't all like super matchy matchy, but if you like the matchy matchy, you can do that because you can totally like mix and match the colors. One of the things that made me realize that I am like truly growing up and I am an adult now is that I started to prioritize having nice bedding. And actually a couple years ago, I ordered a linen sheet set from Brooklinen and they are to this day some of my favorite sheets. The linen has only gotten softer with age. I guess I feel like if we're gonna spend a third of our lives and possibly more in my case, in the winter time, I spend a lot of time in my bed. But if we're gonna spend that much time in our beds, we might as well make it a luxurious experience and Brooklinen has definitely helped me to elevate my bedding experience in the past and I'm excited to try out this bundle now. Oh, it feels amazing. I have to admit, I'm a really big fabric snob. This feels so nice. Such nice cotton, I love the way this feels. Anyway, I'm gonna sleep on it tonight and I will report to you tomorrow how I feel and how I slept. <laughs> because who doesn't want to know how I slept? <laughs> anyway, thank you so much to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. You can check out that $20 off your $100 purchase down in the description box below and using the code Becca De La Plants. This is a little plant frame from Modern Sprout and I love it. It's so cute on this wall. I'm gonna bring that Monstera. This is scary. I look like, is it Slenderman who just is in shadows? That is terrifying. Um, okay. We're back. I'm gonna bring the Monstera back in. Good morning. It was a really good sleep. <laughs> Sheets were a total win. I'm so cozy right now. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> hey, good morning for real. I am watering some few like last minute plants that I have up here. I have a Sebu Blue that lives up on this ledge right here and I always neglect it oh my gosh I'm really exposing myself for being a plant neglector but we're just keeping it real honestly I feel like it's so easy to feel and think that just because someone has a YouTube channel <laughs> or makes videos online or whatever that we have it all together but we don't and anyone who tries to tell you is probably lying to themselves or to you, or both. <laughs> we got a very small snow and a lot of it is melting already. As you can see, it was very pretty this morning when it was all on the trees still, but it's only been like two hours and it's already mostly gone, which totally stinks. But um, I have just like three or four more plants to water in this plant room and then I think I have finished the watering in here that I need to do like really bad. So I feel super good about that. I'm really happy that I'm finally getting through all of these plants. It has taken me forever, at least three videos worth of time, but we're gonna start off with this very patient lady 
she is showing me signs that she's thirsty and has gone beyond being thirsty actually. She's actually unhappy with me. This is one that I definitely haven't watered since before I left on my trip. I feel really bad about that, so we're gonna fix her up, get rid of these dying leaves so she can make room for new leaves coming in, which she actually does have some new growth coming in. Here, uh, this is relatively new, and then we got this one. So she's still like doing her best for me, which is nice. I'm very thankful for that at the very least. The plants that I need to water are quite large, so I think I'm actually gonna take them to the sink because I could get them all done like in one go <laughs> if I put them in the sink. So let's do that. I am babysitting this orchid for my neighbor and her fern, which are two plants that like actually really scare me. <laughs> But they've been doing okay so far. I kind of want to move this into the plant room though because it's not getting very much light in the spot that it's in. And I'm noticing that it's getting like, you can see there's something going on there. That wasn't there when she dropped it off. But also this leaf was not here when she dropped it off. So it's put out a new leaf in my care. And it's doing another leaf down here. So it's not in the blooming process obviously. But she's keeping it to regrow um, a bloom because they do do that if you didn't know. But yeah, I have only ever had one orchid before and it died. <laughs> or maybe I put it, out, put it out of its misery. I don't think that it necessarily died. I just like was over it and I was like, toss it. But yeah, I'm babysitting this one and let me show you the fern that I'm babysitting. I'm actually very shocked that it has stayed looking this good. There's only a few pieces that have died, but for the most part it looks really good and it has put off new growth since it's been here So it's like replacing old growth. This is new for sure I don't know what kind of fern this is. Maybe if you guys know maybe I will try to find one of these Because this one has been pretty happy and I don't hate it I really don't what I've been doing is I've been watering it and then I've been leaving water in the bottom here She has like a wick system So the watering just I don't have to water it as often which is really nice but anyway, update on this. Well, this is probably the first time I've ever showed it, so it's not really an update, but yeah. It looks pretty good, right? <laughs> okay, this Pylea, Peperomioides, is getting so big. Um, I am noticing, though, that the, the pot has like these holes on the sides, and babies are coming out of the holes, which is funny and interesting. Um, this is actually a main mother plant and two babies like down here. That's what makes up this whole cluster and there's another baby right here. I don't see any others. I think it's just those two coming out the sides. But this made me think, has anyone ever planted... Hold on, I'm going to bring this closer. I feel like I'm so far away from you. <laughs> has anyone ever planted a Pilea peperomioides in a strawberry pot? Because you know how strawberry pots have like all the holes on the sides or like succulent pots I mean, people also plant succulents in them so it's not just a strawberry pot but yeah have you guys ever seen someone plant a pilea peperomioides in one of those because i'm kind of tempted especially with this one putting off so many babies which they do they definitely as they mature they will start putting off a ton of babies but yeah i thought that'd be kind of cute to separate the babies and like plant the mother plant in the main section and then the babies all around it like i feel like that would look really cool i think transporting that plant would be a literal nightmare but i think it'd be really cool to like try it out i don't know let me know what you guys think of that idea and if i should try it out i'm pretty positive that those pots will be everywhere this spring so I could definitely locate one and try it if I wanted. I have to uh, water this one really slow because there are holes like below the soil line and if I water it too fast, the water will just come out of the holes and the actual plant won't get any water. So I have to do like a very slow trickle so that it can just slowly infiltrate the pot and the soil. So this room needs a really good Tidy. We've got shoes everywhere. I've got plant stuff everywhere and I have this bucket Which I'm going to put plant debris in so any of the dead leaves that I've picked off my plants in the last couple of weeks And then also I'm going to put like any 
just fully dead plants. I'm just gonna empty it into here and then I'm gonna go take it out to my compost out in the garden. Not today probably because it's slippery outside. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I have this bucket. I just got this at Walmart and I actually bought it to be a catch-all bucket for my car because you guys, <laughs> there are clean car people and there are messy car people and I unfortunately am a messy car person. So not things that are gonna like go bad and make it stink, but just like jackets or sweaters or phone chargers or just random things so i bought this for that and then i haven't really used it for that because i brought in one load from my car and the bucket never made it back out it will eventually but anyway i'm gonna go around and pick up all of the leaves and dead plants Plant room cleanup is done. It feels so good for this room to be clean again. <laughs> I feel like I'm cleaning it in like every plant chores video, but that is honestly just how it goes. It gets messy, it gets used, it's a small room. I always, like people are always so shocked when they come here and see how small it is actually because it looks so much bigger online, probably because I have a wide angle lens. But yeah, it's done and I feel so good and clean. It, there's definitely things like tucked behind the chairs. I mean, I definitely did a little bit of a lazy clean, but I am feeling like I'm gonna wanna do a deep clean relatively soon because I want to wash this rug. It's a rug from Ruggable and I haven't washed a Ruggable rug yet, although I now have three in my house because I totally fell in love after um, getting this one. They're amazing. But um, yeah, I just noticed that up by like the spots that we walk a lot, it's a little bit more dull in color. That also could be due to the fact that I spill soil like all the time on the ground here. But I have a uh, Dyson cordless vacuum and it is just the best vacuum I have ever had in my life. I love that thing so freaking much. And actually by the end of today, I need to go vacuum my bedroom because when I was up there cleaning, I was like, I need a vacuum in here as well. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I just noticed that like by the front door, over here and then by this door it gets it's like a little discolored or something so I need to wash it or I, I want to wash it just to see what the experience would be like but because it's so big it expands like basically the entire room I'd have to clear out all the furniture and it would be like a whole to do 
which is fine, but I am thinking about making some changes to the plant room. Nothing huge by any means, but I will be making a video about that, um, just showing what I end up doing. But this green wall looks really full. Like all of these plants look so good, despite me being so neglectful. Like I'm having a moment looking at it and I'm like, wow. <laughs> These look really good. Let me show you my view. This is what it looks like to me, okay? Because the wide angle brings in more than my eyes would. This is what I'm looking at. This Brantiatum looks actually very good, despite how it was looking in a previous video. There's definitely some leaves that are not going to come back, but it's looking pretty good. And this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This Hoya is such a trooper. Like literally, I neglect it so hard and it still looks amazing. I'm really happy about it. I need more Hoya like this one. I think it's like the Bilobata or something, something like that. I always screw up the idea on that one. Anyway, everyone down here looks really full and beautiful. We do have a very yellow leaf right there, uh, but I'm like really happy with the way that everything is looking. This plant up in the corner is such a star. I seriously love it. I need more of these. If I was to get a duplicate plant, I'd want another one of those. It's so beautiful. I love it up there. And then I love the visual of this up top. It's so beautiful. I need more of those. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and also when I was eating my breakfast, I was looking at this spider plant here and it just looks so cute. I don't really want to cut off the babies. Like I had definitely planned on doing that but I don't really want to because they look so cute. <laughs> so me oogling about my plant collection. We're going to stop that now. And I have a bunch of pots to clean out because I had a lot of uh, deaths over the last couple of months, obviously, and some plants that just got uh, potted and I never cleaned out the pot. So I usually wait until I have like a big collection of pots that need to be washed and then I'll wash them. And I don't know where I'm going to put them, which is a little scary to think about, but they will get put somewhere. <laughs> Um, but I'm just gonna wash them in the sink with some dish soap and a scrubber. So let's go do that. People will sometimes ask me how I am able to like water my plants and everything in the sink without getting dirt and everything else like stuck at the bottom or ruining my garbage disposal or something. And the key is to clean out any like large chunks from your pot. So like there was some pumice in here. So I'm gonna clean that out and just put it in this pot over here. And I have one of these things. So this just covers my drain. And yeah, it'll catch anything too big. So that's it. It's really easy. Nothing really to do besides that. And then we just get scrubbing. And I'm trying to figure out which scrubber to use we do have an old scrub daddy, but I think we threw it away and I would have preferred to use something like that. But yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna rifle around underneath my sink real quick. I'm just gonna use this because we have a bunch of these around and this one's like old anyway. So, okay, let's get started. Also, Dawn Power Wash, anybody? I freaking love this stuff. It's the best. There's nothing wrong with that. Exo McKenna just released a podcast called With My Own Two Hands and I am so freaking excited about this and I have to say <laughs> I am manifesting being a guest on this podcast in 2023. I don't know if that's going to happen but I am manifesting it and I'm really hoping for it so if you guys are the I don't know, praying or manifesting type, please keep this in your thoughts <laughs> because that would be like my ultimate goal. I just am so, I love her so much. I admire her so much. She has inspired so much of my content, my building, and I just, yeah, I would love to just be able to talk with her. And um, yeah, if I could ever talk with her about like building my greenhouse, that would be so incredible. So, or just like plant spaces, building on my green wall, anything like that. Please just be thinking about that this year. <laughs>
friends, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing some plant chores, getting stuff done. I'm seeing a lot of comments on these videos that I make of you guys saying that they have inspired you to get up and do some plant chores. That is honestly like the greatest thing to hear <laughs> as a video creator online um, because I just want to like do life alongside you guys. I want to inspire you to do things, um, whether it's, you know, building an entire green wall or a greenhouse or washing out your pots and watering your plants when they really need it, you know? <laughs> I wanna be that person for you uh, because as I just mentioned with McKenna, like she is that person for me and I wanna be that person for you. And um, I just, I really love making these videos. I feel so happy and inspired right now. I don't know why, something just hit me. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to check out Brooklinen in the description box if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.